we come here to this table every week. And it can be tempting to make it a very personal affair just between us and God. And certainly taking time for communion and meditation and prayer is deeply personal. And yet sitting beside us every week that we're here, sitting beside us as a member of our family. And very often we are unaware of who really sits beside us to dine. Can this table be a place of transformation? Come hungry, come weary, come just as you are, for all should be Most every week I invite all who are present in our sanctuary to this table. And often I say, seekers, believers, people of faith, people of doubt, all are welcome. And why is that the invitation? Because it seems to me that that's the invitation that Jesus gave. Think there were no doubters in the upper room? Does the name Thomas ring a bell? My name is Yanka Yosefia. My partner, Angie Butler, visited this church a few months ago and told me that she thought I might like it. She told me that all are welcome. Since attending here, I have felt transformed by your open hearts. I am male to female transgender. I am deaf. I'm a child of immigrants. I am an atheist just so I could make life even more challenging. My partner is also male to female transgender. I guess you could say we're lesbians. <laughs> I live in two worlds. One as a woman that I am, but at the same time I am constantly being reminded that my appearance is somewhat androgynous. My question to all of you is, are you willing to walk with me and to claim me as your own? Is it okay with you that I don't fall into any socially prescribed roles? Are you willing to let the light transform us together? Transformative light moves us away from stereotypes and judgments to a place of peace and allowing others to be who they are. Come hungry, come weary, Come just as you are, for all should be welcomed from near or afar. My table is open, my grace freely give. You're loved and forgiven, come rest. 
just and be fed. Others were in the room with Jesus that last supper. Many whom of that had left their homes and families and their livelihoods to follow God's call. They were sure that this would be the most difficult part of their journey, making that choice to follow. Were they ever wrong? Now, after they had been faithful and given everything, they hear that their Messiah, the one sent to redeem them and to save them from oppression, their Messiah would now be killed. They must have wondered, how can this be? If we can't trust this Messiah, then who can we trust? So in fear, one of Jesus' closest allies betrayed him, setting up a potential top-line fallout between Jesus and Peter. Yet even though Jesus knew that Peter would betray him in the worst possible way, he welcomed him to eat and drink. When I was 17 years old, the minister of my newly discovered Pentecostal church dropped by to check on me. We walked we talked together and suddenly without warning, he pressed me up against a wall and was very aggressive. I managed to push him away, but before he left, he told me not to tell. Who would believe me anyway? That was the beginning. Time and again, leaders or members in the church would be inappropriate. Guess who I blamed? You got it. What was wrong with me? Eventually, I met my wife and ended up back in the Methodist Church. I answered God's call and entered into the candidacy program for Methodist ministry. I worked for a large church and successfully completed my mentoring program. I was accepted into Wesley Seminary, a part of American University in Washington, D.C and I was approved to pastor a church in Baltimore. Then came the bomb. Michelle could not go with me. It would be inappropriate to move her into the parsonage. My story is familiar to many of you. We trust the church with our very lives, but somehow when we least expect it, this vehicle of God's love explodes within us such a bomb of destruction that we are left utterly bereft. I need transformation. Many of us are longing to be able to truly trust. We cry for the transformative life to incinerate the residual charge of fear and replace fear with peace. We want to love without constantly wondering when our trust will be betrayed. Transformation sometimes comes in a moment filled with divine presence. Sometimes we are transformed by our day-to-day -day walk with God's people. There are many paths to reconciliation, many paths to peace. The light still speaks the light still transforms. Amen. Transformative light moves us from fear to trust, from <clears throat> betrayal to reconciliation, from holding grudges or building walls to giving each other grace and offering forgiveness in a way that brings inner peace. <laughs> Come hungry, come weary, come just as you are, for all should be welcomed from near or afar. My table is open, my grace freely given. 
give your love and forgiven come rest and be fed the upper room was pretty full that night doubters betrayers people huddling in fear and filled with anxiety much like we gather around this table every week and just like that night, perhaps sometimes there are those gathered here that feel like they got it all figured out. That their beliefs and their faith is the right one. Maybe even at times the only one. How many closed invitations have been made in the name of God because we just didn't know how or if we could welcome those with differences? The light of the world came to transform a broken relationship at a time. I have loved and served God all my life. Our children were taught to love and serve God. My daughter felt the call to ministry at a very young age. She was active in all church activities, even began singing in church when she was six years old. She played the auto harp and sang, Jesus lives in a little house. <laughs> At that young age, she would visit Sunday school rooms of the different children's departments, play the auto harp, and teach them different songs. As a small child, she would put on one of her dad's ties, line up her stuffed animals, get her Bible and her hymnal, and she would have church. <laughs> As time passed, I began to see her grow into a beautiful child of God. She always had a heart for the elderly, as a teenager, she would visit nursing homes in the area and sing for them. I knew she was different. And deep within my heart, I knew the different, but I had a problem. I had been taught by the church that my daughter was going to hell, and it broke my heart. I so wanted her to be in a right relationship with God. I guess you could say the light came on several years ago when she was home for a weekend. A phone call was received advising her if she ever sang in church again that they would spread the word all over town that she was gay. This upset both of us and being gay was something that was, was not discussed in Eastern Kentucky. It was then that she talked to the church's minister of music who advised her that she, could no, she was no longer welcome to take part in any musical ministry of her church. At that time, even though she was living and working in Lexington, she was still active in all the Christmas and Easter musicals as well as Sunday morning special music. We had long conversations over the years with her finally telling me not to worry that she and God had things all worked out. Then God began to speak to me. It became clear over time that my child was not the one that needed to be reconciled to the church. The church needed to be reconciled to my child and all the other sons and daughters that were being cast out by us. It was as if God said to me, this is my child. And you don't get to say who is worthy of my love. I've loved her since before time. I am so thankful to be the recipient of God's transformational love. My daughter is not only my best friend, but she's my pastor. And I am filled with such love knowing that she's being used by God to lead others in a transformational light. My grace freely 
give your loved and forgiven come rest and be fed